My name is Mark Bowen. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine physician. Today we're going to be demonstrating harvest of uh, semitendinosus tendon to be used for ACL reconstruction. The indications for our quadrupled single tendon technique include any acute or chronic ACL tear is preferred for patients with patellofemoral degeneration or a history of patellofemoral tracking issues or pain, when a patient prefers to minimize anterior knee pain or difficulty kneeling, and in revision of bone tendon bone reconstructive techniques. So normally the patient would be positioned at about 80 to 90 degrees of knee flexion and landmarks used are the top of the tibial plateau, typically about three finger breadths below that. Uh, the choice of incision here can be either vertical or oblique. I prefer oblique because it's the direction of the tendon and allows more easy harvest in my experience. Sometimes it's very easy to be able to palpate the tendon and feel it under your fingers. We make an, this incision. It's important to go directly down to layer one and clean layer one off very carefully before any further dissection is performed. Here you can see the tendon moving beneath the forceps. It's very important to uh, localize the top portion, so just above the gracilis. Once that's cleaned off and visible, we typically grab layer one with forceps and take a 15 blade and make a small window in layer one, j again, just above the gracilis tendon. There'll be then a space that will be immediately visible and the medial collateral ligament will be seen below that. Typically now the, the fibers are in the, the same orientation as the skin incision, so a Metzenbaum scissors can be used to extend the incision in layer one. It's very useful to use a ribbon, small ribbon retractor here to pull layer one forward so you can see beneath it and on the inside you, of layer one you'll find the hamstring tendons. The gracilis will be the first, the semitendinosus here is the second tendon and this using a, a right angle clamp the semitendinosus tendon can be hooked. Typically here I would place a Penrose drain uh, beneath the semitendinosus tendon allowing you to pull it forward uh, into the wound. Once that is done, we will look for the fibrous attachment to the medial gastroc, and those are cut using a Metzenbaum scissors facing away from the tendon. Once those are cut, the tendon will typically retract even further into the wound, and there'll be more mobility as those bands are cut. Typically then I run my finger along the top and lower surfaces of the tendon and make sure there are no other adhesions uh, or obstacles to passing a tendon. This is a open-ended tendon stripper leaving the attachment on the tibia and it's slid up the tendon. It's very important not to force it. Typically if you have to exert excessive pressure uh, you may exit the tendon prematurely which is disappointing. Once the tendon is pulled out to the wound we clean the muscular portions off of the tendon and then trace it back to its tibial attachment and remove directly from the tibia. Postoperative rehabilitation includes immediate weight bearing as tolerated Physical therapy is initiated early without range of motion restrictions, and a locked brace is typical until quadriceps control is restored.